Hi, good morning everybody, it's Jean here. Um, not necessarily a tutorial today or in the next few videos um, for this project, but I'm just showing you um, something that I, <laughs> I just found. A little bit of history. Um, I went to my first quilt show in about 2004, 2005. 2004. And I, it was at a local expo center near here. And I was wondering afterwards why I went. Because the reason I say that, I was never really a quilt person. Meaning that I never, I didn't grow up with like that homespun, cozy, we had a lovely home, but that um, quilty type lifestyle. I didn't, I didn't have that. We had, we had polyester bedspreads, um, which was fine. Um, so I didn't, I wasn't around that at all, but I think something, um, when I happened to walk into this expo center, for whatever reason my car took me, something struck in my heart, like, oh, oh, but not like necessarily traditional quilts. As I've evolved, as you know, my work is not necessarily traditional. It's whatever is in my brain at the time. I always say, I, I let my fingers do the walking, but as a beginner, 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 I was entranced with all of these wonderful, wonderful works of art. And I thought, I can do that. And I have been sewing since I was a little girl. And I have been collecting fabric for many, 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 many years. Um, I was making little girls' dresses. I made wedding dresses, bridesmaids' dresses, all my curtains and soft furnishings, everything. Pillows, everything. So I had been sewing and I had quite a lot of fabric. Um, but I started looking at quilting fabric, 100% cotton, which was awesome. And I very, very quickly, as I do, um, I was started to want to quilt. So I was raising our very large family at the time. So I didn't have a room. I was in the basement. I was everywhere. Ah, I was in the boiler room at one point, you know, like setting up my little old machine. And I had an old Kenmore machine. Well, I got interested in my husband very kindly. We went and bought myself a Husqvarna. And at back uh, in 20 years ago, the, the, the designer won Husqvarna, an uh, embroidery machine as well as a sewing machine. Beautiful, fabulous. So I was embroidering, da, 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 da. And then I, and then, um, I realized my sewing machine was fabulous. So I got into my quilting and I made very, very quickly, uh, a small, about 100 quilts. Gave them away very, very quickly. Baby quilts, little quilts. So I had all of the scraps. What I'm getting to is I had all these scraps. So... I, I, I'm, I have to say, in total honesty, I'm not necessarily fond of scrap quilts. I'm not a lover of them. I've made many to use up my scraps because it's a waste. Um, this was my first scrap quilt. But I, I, I thought, well, I'm going to use up these scraps. And I thought, well, I don't know what to do. So what had happened is in my beginning forays into the quilting world, I went out and I bought some books, obviously. And this is one of the books I bought. This book is from Le Leisure Arts Presents. I believe they're still around. This was in, let me just see here. This was published in, um, the, uh, hold on. Oh, the fourth printing, 2002. So this book, this, this has been around for many, many, many years, okay? Um, what I'm saying is why I, I chose this book. It was Encyclopedia of Classic Quilt Patterns. Now, if you're in, if you know anything about the quilting world, quilting's been around forever, and but new techniques, new methods, quick and easy, time-saving gadgets and gizmos to make your piecing, your cutting, your this, your that fly. Whereas back then, um for our foremothers would, would, would take a pair of scissors and maybe a piece of cardboard and a needle on a thread or a treadle sewing machine or in the beginning a, an electric sewing machine, very, very basic. So this book, I was reading it, it's so, oh, some of our favorites, um, attic windows, ca cathedral windows, double wedding ring, grandmother's flower garden, Sunbonnet Sue. Now, why I'm going like that, if you quilter quilters realize they're hard patterns. That's not an easy quilt. Um, a tree of Life. Not an easy beginner pattern. But I pick up this book. I'm thinking I'm all clever. I'm like, oh, I like some of these patterns. And 
I actually made a uh, fan quilt for my, for my friend Jen, one of my first quilts. But I was looking at this book and I thought, oh, I like, I like this quilt so much. And it's called Joseph's Coat. It's, it's from the scripture in Genesis 37.3. Joseph's Coat of Many Colors. I think there's a Broadway show. Uh, Joseph's Technicolor Dream Coat or something. A quilt with tons of colors in it. I'm like, ah, oh, I can use up my scraps. Well, I'm looking at it, and, and I, I'm like, I like that look. And I went out, and I got all this pink. It calls for tons of pink. I, or it had tons of pink. Because back then, about 15 years ago, again, if you are, or have been in the quilting world, there was such a thing called 30s reproduction fabric. Beautiful, cheery, bright, saturated colors of like the 1930s. Sweet, sweet. And this sort of bubblegum pink. There was a pale, like an apple green, real pretty, and a lavender solids to ground the, the, these bubblegummy prints. And that's a lot of what I have here. So I liked the pink. I thought, I'm going to make that quilt. So, <laughs> so I'm, there, I'm reading, and I'm like, I can do that. Yeah. Then I, then I, <laughs> I didn't read this. It's like my you know, however many quilts I've made, but just a few. I'm a beginner, beginner, right? I'm reading this now. I didn't read it then. Joseph's coat is not recommended for the beginner quilter as the piecing requires practiced skill with curved seams. However, if you had pieced a top or two and are comfortable with curved seams, I'd never, I straight seams all the way, right? Don't shy away from this. Well, I'm not, well, I'm not one to shy away from anything, right? I can do this. Curve seams can be fun. I'm like, oh, I have, I have all these rotten kids I'm, I'm raising. I want some fun, right? So, and, and the sense of accomplishment you'll get upon seeing this finished quilt will be worth the effort. <laughs> I didn't get a sense of accomplishment because I didn't finish it. Um, for control and accuracy, we suggest hand piecing your quilt. <laughs> well, for any of you who know, I don't hand piece anything. I would rather make my husband a shirt than sew his button on. Ah, I, you know, like, oh, darling, did you hem my pants? I'm like, no, no, I'm not hemming your pants. I mean, there, I wonder there, there's an expression, um, asking a quilter to mend Clothes is like asking Picasso to paint your garage. <laughs> That's so true. I am allergic to a needle and thread, right? Hand piece this quilt. But I'm like, I can do this. I remember thinking, I can do this, right? Well, I did it. And what it is, it consists of a block, right? Which is not a block. The block is a circle. So I'm like, well, I'm clever. I can do that. So it's like, okay, see... See page 190 for, for templates of pattern A and B, right? So this is the template to make this quilt. There's not one straight seam in this quilt. So there's the template, and here's this template here. So this piece has to go on one, two, three parts of this template. And then you need like one, two three, four, five of this unit to make one block. <laughs> so technically, this point here with one, two, three, four, five should make a beautiful point. <laughs> nah. my, my, my little circle block, this, this here, it didn't match. Sometimes there was holes in there. It was like an inch and a half out, right? So I'm like panicking. I'm thinking, I'm making these things my piecing was okay. I, I'm, 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 I was, I was decent, but nothing matched. So I, I'm scrambling. I'm thinking, oh, I'll, I'll stick a hunk of white fabric. So I'm cutting out a million circles and satin stitching them on to hide that mess. Right? There's a few lumps back here. Anyway, I thought I got this out of the tote, and I found it, and I thought. What happened? Oh, 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 oh. Well, what happened was it what happened was I I was feverishly making these circles, these blocks, and all of a sudden I'm thinking you make circles, you sew them into rows, you sew your rows together. But I I was thinking I'd only ever made rectangular or square quilts. 
Well, I'm thinking, <clears throat> when will this quilt ever end? Well, it didn't. <laughs> it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And I, I got panicked and I'm thinking, well, how do you finish this, this scalloped edge? So I'd add another row thinking that a, a straight line would miraculously occur. <laughs> well, it didn't. And then I thought, this quilt is 105 inches by 100 inches. <laughs> and I, I did it. I put all my white things. I, and, and, I, and then I had the, the quandary of finishing it. And I was, I was overwhelmed. So I folded it up and I put it away. But along with, and I just discovered that I was cleaning out my sewing room and I'm like, oh, there's that quilt. Maybe I'll just shut that tote. <laughs> I got it out. But along with this, and I don't know where my brain was at the time, folded up inside of it was this white fabric. Quite a lot of it. Yards and yards. And I thought, cheesy white fabric. It's not that. It's thin. It's not the best quality. This is decent fa This is decent fabric, but I'm thinking, what was I thinking? Um, but I got tons of this fabric. So I thought, well, obviously I was going to do something. I thought, was I going to back it? Now I, I backed, I've, from, from quilt one, I've backed everything with um, fabric, fabric. N not, not, not like muslin. I use, I use real fabric. Not, not that muslin's not real fabric. But I use printed fabric, and I'm thinking, well, I wasn't, because there's tons of it, there's tons of it. So I'm thinking, I don't know what I was thinking to do with this fabric. But I thought, well, now, in, you know, fast forward to 2018, what would I do with this quilt to try to finish it? Then I thought, I thought, well, I'm not going to finish it. I'm going to send it out to a long arm quilter. <laughs> long arm quilters, you send it the top out, you provide the backing, and they, they, finish it do it all over quilt pattern and i'm thinking oh, i know i don't know the difference yeah look at the quilt i made then i then i was embarrassed i'm like oh, i would never send this out to anyone like oh my goodness jean true love can't quilt at all she can't sew at all um because with curved piecing or with this curved piecing it doesn't lay flat i'm looking at this quilt now through obviously more experienced eyes and to be honest I did a pretty good job um, for a beginner who didn't have a clue what she was doing. But having said that, it's not flat at all. You know, some of these things are smaller. I don't know. I was following a template, but I was like cutting them out with using a cereal box. So it's, it's sort of bunchy and it's not flat. There's an expression in quilting like, oh, well, that will quilt out. Which means, obviously, when you sandwich a quilt sandwich together and you stitch that area is going to be flat but and, and and stitching stitching takes up minuscule bits of the fabric so your quilting your quilt your actual quilting stitches will actually shrink a quilt slightly that's what it means they're like oh that'll quilt out but you inevitably if you're not careful you'll get tucks you'll get tucks especially if something is wavy if you've ever done a border and it's wavy because it's been stretched a bit. Well, you know, you might quilt it and it'll have tucks. And to a certain extent, that's happened to me and I'm an experienced quilter. I'm like, oh, who cares about a tuck or two? Are you kidding me? This isn't going in a show. It's ridiculous. So I, I make a tuck and I quilt it. But this whole thing, this massive king size quilt is not flat, it's not really flat. So I did really quite seriously contemplate sending it out, but then I thought, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let somebody else do that. And and st and and also, well, how how if I get it quilted and I get it back, I still have the dilemma of these curved piecing edges, these scalloped edges. Now, one of my first quilts was my Dresden plate. Um, again, I wanted sort of this faux heirloom, um, so I made a Dresden plate quilt, and I look at it, and it's it's sweet. But, but, and it had, I followed a pattern um, from a magazine that I, that I had gotten, and it had what was called an ice cream cone border. Um, and it's scallops. It's a scallop. One of my first, what I was thinking. Um, so I persevered through it, and I cut bias binding. I sewed it 
on the front and I turned it over and I, I hand stitched by scalloped border around that Dresden plate. Never again. Last thing I've, well, I've, I've hand stitched about two bindings. I'll never do it again. I, as you know, I machine stitch everything. I do, I hand stitch nothing. So I'm looking at this quilt, even if I had sent it out and they quilted it to the edge, I'm not about to hand sew bias binding around this massive quilt. I don't have the time, the energy, or the inclination. I could, I could care less. So I'm thinking, well, maybe, so as a more of an experienced quilter, what I'm getting at is as more of an experienced quilter, I have started something um, that I was filming that I thought, well, maybe I'm not, I'll film it, see how it goes. I set my, my new handy dandy camera with a tripod right here on my sewing machine. And I thought, well, maybe I'll film this, what I'm doing. Um, and if it turns out, it turns out. But I, I thought, nah, I, I got fed up. But then this has been a few days in the thinking. I, and so I've come back to it and I'll show you what I've done. I thought, well, maybe my initial thought process, I don't know, was I will applique my quilt top to a white border. That's what my experienced quilter mind is now in 2018 thinking that I will do. And that's what I did. I cut strips of this fabric. I ripped it. I ripped the strips of this fabric. It's okay fabric. You can see through it. It's okay. Once it's sandwiched, it'll be okay. I ripped that and I set that on my table there. And then what I did is I carefully just, well here, like I've done three corn, three sides. What I did is I'll just lay this sort of on that border. <laughs> and, and, and then I, and it, it doesn't lay flat. So what I've done is I've sort of come back like that piece. I'll come back and I'll just trim up these, these scallops because there's, it's just like a nest of seams. It's, it's just, a, it's just a mess. So I just sort of trim that up where I would actually use my machine, which I've done, uh, uh, you'll, you'll see, um, and I've blanket stitched it. I've used a heavier cotton thread um, that maybe looks like it was back, you know, 80 years ago. So it's a nice, substantial, sort of folky looking uh, blanket stitch. So I've actually tidied these edges up and I blanket stitched as well as I could onto this white border here to sort of, as I said, to sort of applique my top. So I end up with a square quilt. That's what I'm doing. But I, I was, I was, uh, I did three, three quarters and, and then I thought, oh, it's, a, it's, it's still a mess. Um, but I thought, well, I'll, just, I'll put that piece here. I just stitched it. I just sort of turned it under. I didn't even seam it. I just sort of sewed it. Um, and I, I thought, well, this will, this is what it would probably have looked like if I had been more of an experienced beginner quilter. <laughs> my, my sort of, um, you know, cheap jack white border here. But I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish up this edge here. Um, and then, as I said, at least I end up with a, squ or a square quilt, hopefully. Then comes the point where I, so I, I will have to really, 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 when I sandwich this, manipulate the fabric. I have also to um, find, what, eight or nine yards of fabric somewhere. Um, this is my yardage over here. I have some yardage in the other room because um, I don't want to necessarily piece the backing and I don't I'm not going to buy anything new I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm not doing that because this is this is not a quality quilt nothing is falling apart I must say um, it's, it's all constructed well but very very amateurish um, so oh oh that's right did I say I had gotten my I don't know if I had said that excuse me if I repeat myself which I do a million times um, I had gotten my um, old Husqvarna, and as a backup, I had gotten a Husqvarna uh, Viking Sapphire, uh, 850, I believe, 805, 850, something like that, as a backup to my other Husqvarna machine, my embroidery machine. Nice little machine I got many years ago. Um, nice machine. Why I'm saying that is my Juki, which I use all the time, is just a straight stitch. I needed a, a machine with a 
of blanket stitch. And this actually, this machine, although it's a little bit noisy, I was thinking, oh, maybe it needs to be serviced. This was a, this was a backup to my other, um, my other Husqvarna. And then I got my brother, my massive brother, which was, I used solid for five solid years. Um, but I, did, I didn't feel, I'm thinking, I got to get my sewing machine out. I got to find the foot. I got to find the cord. I got to find the table. So I did that. I set up my little machine here just to blanket stitch this, um, this edge on here. I have to really, I mean, it's just raw edge. Like I said, I'd have to really tidy it up. Up close, it probably looks terrible. But from a distance, um, it's doing what I wanted it to do. So as I say, finished is better than perfect. This is so not perfect, but I'm proud of it. I thought I am going to finish this. Or, or I thought I was getting really fed up with, with this. This was, oh, it was crazy. I thought maybe I'll just fold it up and put it away for the next 10 years. <laughs> but I thought, no, no, Jean, you're always saying finish your quilts. Don't have unfinished projects, which I only have. I was looking in, my, in that tote where I found this. I have about three more that I had begun a while ago. And they were ambitious. They were ambitious. Um... Yeah, they were very, very ambitious. I have another quilt that I, I, I what was I thinking? It was a king size quilt that I, that I've, I'll show you that it, it, it's just extremely ambitious to try to quilt. I've pieced the top. And as I said, I don't send stuff out. This would cost about, I did my research, this would have cost perhaps with an all over pattern um, about $200, to, which, is, which is okay. But I thought, nah. I'm going to do it. Plus, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, at this point, 2018, I'm not proud of my craftsmanship. I'm very proud of my 2006 Jean making this. Very, very proud. And, and whether she likes it or not, my daughter's getting a really, a, a really cheesy, no points matching heirloom quilt. This will be for her. <laughs> to line her dog cage. No, 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 no. It, it, it'll be nice. So, um, no, this will go on my bed. At the foot of my bed. If, if, it, if I finish it. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this little thing. Um, probably in episodes because I'm going to be working on this as well as my block party. So I'm going to do the little bit of this now and then. Um, so just look out for, um, for the progress of this massive quilt that I will, obviously I will free motion quilt um, in the spokes once I get it put together. Um, so yeah, there's the saga of my Joseph's coat that is, um, that is not recommended for the beginner quilter. I did not hand piece this quilt. I was not comfortable with curved seams. I did not get a sense of accomplishment. <laughs> I was always a lousy student, right? I do everything the opposite. Anyway, that's my little tale. That's what I'm working on. Um, I'm going to be seeing these spokes in my sleep. And um, we'll see how I get on with this. So I'll just put a little bit of footage up of what I'm, how I'm doing this for now. All right, folks. Thanks so much for, for bearing with me and uh, coming along with this journey. See ya. I wanted to show you um, what exactly I'm doing and what challenges I have with this silly quilt. Um, as you can uh, uh, maybe you can see, I have actually, it doesn't look it, I've actually ironed this bit. I haven't, actually, I, I, I didn't iron that bit. I should have done. But I haven't pressed the whole entire quilt. I just, I just literally unwrapped it. But I, I'm just going to, I'm just concentrating now on this bit here. Again, this is my second border. I've cut this or I've ripped this fabric. And I'm just, I'm just sort of, I'm not, I haven't even measured anything. I'm just sort of go, guiding along the edge of the table here, trying to keep it a bit straight. Now, because it's not flat, um, I have, and, and th th there are quite a few places were fine. They pretty much, they pretty much were okay. Um, but I've come to a place here. <laughs> this, this bit here, this round block is just completely, it's about a, an inch and a half too big to lay flat. These, these, these lay flat. Um, 
but this area in here is just terrible. Now there's an expression in quilting that says um, you can quilt something out. You know, something is, something is really badly constructed or not flat. Um, or or uh, wavy. There's an expression, oh, that'll quilt out. Well, hopefully it will quilt out. And what that means is, obviously, when you stitch in the quilting method, you're going to stitch the, 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 the uh, quilt backing and batting together. So it'll be, be somewhat flat. But you're obviously going to get tucks, as in this bit. Now, even this bit here, I don't know if you can see, but this bit here, this piece, I, I, haven't, I haven't ironed it um than the last 10 or 12 years but that is really i don't know why that is really just wrinkled but i guess what i'm saying is who cares like the, the, a quilt's a quilt the quilt gets wrinkled and who's going to be looking at my tiny little stitches here but it is terrible this especially here so what i'm what i'm seeing is i'm just sort of trying to push it the way it it, it would it would want to go if it was good so we get my i'm using safety pins so this here is is so bad like right right this piece here that i'm just sort of going to tuck it in e equal sort of like i'll tuck that edge over there and i'll tuck this edge into here and i'll pin that and of course these these uh these points aren't going to match i'm not i'm you know they're not going to match here and but there's a big tuck under this piece here well what i'm going to do is when i go to quilt it i'll just sort of tuck that <laughs> and make a new and sort of make a new curved piece you see that so i can just sort of tuck, and i'll do it on that edge too i'll just sort of make a new piece and tuck that bit of pink under that green there to take up some of the excess I'll, I'll sort of try to do the same thing here i'll push this bit up here and tuck it sort of under the white under the white um circle there somehow somehow to to get rid of that um because you know and i don't know i think i'll quilt it on the maybe probably on the seams there because it's busy enough so then this bit like this bit is really bad this is it's not laying flat at all so i'll just have to do some messing about um here that's still big and i'll just make this a semicircle here i'll just again I'll, I'll just on the on the i'll just tuck that into that pink and then when i blanket stitch that i can just trim that right up um where are my scissors like there's a big lump there <laughs> I'll just take that off that big lump of seam just trim that really up up really nice trim this up this is so not how you do it <laughs> but this is how i'm doing it to try to, to try to salvage the mess that i had that i had originally made um oh here's another big here's another big oh no that's off that's all completely falling apart but actually i can catch that just trim off that little bit i can catch that in this in the um quilting so i just sort of tuck that and again this just like i said this bit is sort of very bad <laughs> or worse than worse than the other um so i'll just mess about i'll keep flattening out um and then uh yeah, my but my border is pretty nice and straight it's just these wonky end pieces that are a mess so i'm just going to keep um, messing with my borders get all my borders on this is how I'm going to do it and then I'll I'll figure out my um my uh backing I need to have oh, I would say about nine yards eight or nine yards of fabric I don't know whether I have any um I oh I do have some backing fabric downstairs some yardage I should say because it's going to take a lot um so I'm just going to continue with my borders um and we'll we'll go from there I'm sewing my pinned border onto my fabric and um, this is very thin cheesy fabric you can almost see through it I, it'll be okay it's, it'll be stabilized when when um, I uh, sandwich it and everything and this is the fabric so I thought I'm going to use this fabric so what I'm doing is I'm just I'm just sort of holding this and pulling it my hands are probably in the way just sort of gently tugging it 
so the, when when if when it's when a um blanket stitch it'll shrink the fabric up um and it, it will it will pull the fabric to into so into a into that stitching so i'm just holding it i'm just holding it as i go along um and and just smooth it down onto these you know scallop that whatever they are these round scallop edges here just catching um, my needles going on the outside and catching with the blanket stitch just along this um this raw raw edge i haven't really trimmed this up i actually trimmed some of these where the scallops were because they were they were terrible um again when i go to quilt this I'll probably quilt along this edge to secure it really good. So there's a big lump of seams that I'm just going to go over. This is a good old machine. This is my my um, sapphire. I'll put my needle down actually. Um, yeah. So if you can see that, it's a nice blanket stitch. I'm having to use this instead of my juki. It's a little bit noisy, <laughs> but it's doing a nice, it's doing a nice, um, blanket stitch. Now this is where, this is another bit, uh, I'm just sort of going to tuck that, yeah, just sort of tuck it in, smoothing this the whole while, just catching these raw edges. My whole point is not to have raw edges under the presser foot there. There we go. And we come back. Yeah, I, I, I'm okay with that. I I like. Um, I was reading the uh, the the uh, book, and it was use a use a scallop use a um, a bias binding to to bind these scallops. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, forget that. Been there, done that. That's in closing. I'll back, go back and trim those little minuscule bits um, of raw edge. Again, sort of just come up and get all that raw edge stuff. Um, this this has an automatic um, f uh, presser footer lifter upper, and um, my my Juki doesn't. My, so it's nice to go back. I don't have to lift. I don't have to go around and lift it up. Although I love my Juki. This, this was a good little machine. I had gotten this as a backup for my brother um, years ago. Um, now now this is a mess. Oh geez, yeah, this is a mess. So let me just see. I don't know if my hands, my hands are probably in the way. I'll, I'll give you some closer up pictures. My hands are probably in the way. Sorry, um, ugly hands. Yeah, this is a mess. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me just go up and see what I can do here. I don't expect this to be obviously perfect at all, but there's some shredding <laughs> so <laughs> i'll go back and actually actually there it's um the, the seam has come apart but when i oh no i will i will zigzag it so i'm going to come and i'm going to zigzag or i'm going to blanket stitch this bit and then i'm going to go back and i'm going to blanket stitch i'm going to um zigzag stitch that so work in progress it's a bit of a mess but i think once i get it pressed up get it all ironed get it all trimmed up i can see what i have to work with and the square the square borders are obviously tons better than the silly um scalloped edges i think it'll be okay 
some are scalloped and go up to a nice scallop and then others don't. You know, that was my that was my um my piecing back in the day. <laughs> I think I've come a lot bit long a lot better. But if you can see there, that's a decent enough blanket stitch. Hopefully you can see that. I have to trim that up. Um yeah, that's a decent enough blanket stitch. I'll iron this really nice. Um, press it all, starch it, and um, I'll just continue. Oh, here, oh, here's another. Hopefully, you can see this under the needle. Um, where this bit was, this is the bit which was, well, one of the bits which was hideously full, uh, too big. So I've just really tucked that under. I've actually pinned it. Um, let me just take the pin out. Hold that there. So I'm just, I'm just li literally stitching. Now I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go back stitch back to the other bit of scallop. Uh, let me see if I can, you can see what I did there. So I don't know if you can see what I did there. I just came up on it and just sort of pretended that there was a scallop there because it was so messed up. But, um, oops, might put my needle down. Um, let me go down. And, uh, yeah, so I'll just continue adding my borders. <laughs> 